We are now thrilled to be joined by Carolina Hurricanes general manager Don Waddell, who this I think this puts him in the three timers club on this specific podcast, Don. Although <laughs> I've lost track. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Uh, that, that makes that gives you official friends of, friend of the show status. So congratulations. We, we'll send you a jacket. We have a nice green jacket that goes with yeah, it. mugs. Congrats. <laughs> mugs. Lots of mugs. Oh, busy time, Don. I, I mean, we're going to obviously want to talk about trade deadline because that's really fun for us. Uh, and maybe not as fun for you. I don't know how it is from your perspective. But let's talk outdoor game um, in, in Carolina. It's funny. Sometimes the, you know, the second one nationally doesn't have as much buzz. But I know how like big a deal it is, especially at the local, you know, people starting to get really excited. I've seen, you know, seeing stories pop up in the papers there. What's the buzz like going into this one against the Capitals this week? Well, I think it's uh, outstanding. And, you know, we've been kind of sitting on this for th- over three years because we were supposed to have it back in COVID year, uh, right. push back. So people have been talking about this market for over three years. And, you know, we're filing that final week of it. And it, it's been incredible. You know, I truly think if we'd had another 10 or 15,000 seats, we would have sold them all because the way the, the interest was right off the bat. And, I still have a list on my desk here of people that are still looking for tickets. So, um, so you got my text then. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. (laughs) A lot lot of excitement going on, you know, and and, you know, the whole thing for us is, you know, we've been building this market, you know, particularly the last four or five years with uh, the team being in playoffs every year, but we're going to expose this game to a lot of people that have never been to a hockey game. And that's the exciting thing for me, you know, whether they, uh, live here or live in the area they come back a couple times a year that's that's new fans that we that we inherit so i think that's the uh what we're looking forward to is getting a lot of people that have never experienced nhl hockey in an environment that i think it's going to be outstanding i know it's been on the books for you guys in one way or another for like you said three or four years but what What's that process like? Like I, I know you're you're involved so heavily on the business end of things. Like, is that is there a lobbying process there still, or or is it just something that you know you guys that landed on your desk? You're like, great, or, or is, there, is it something you have to, you have to push for to to bring the outdoor games to, to the market? Yeah, we we definitely did. You know, I got to give a lot of credit to Tom Dundon because when he first bought the team, it was one of the first things he said. We want to get an outdoor game and. It was, it was almost a year in works. We had to supply a lot of information. And, and I got to be honest, NHL was a little bit worried, you know, where we were with our franchise mm-hmm. at that point and uh, uh, how we were going to sell, you know, 50-some thousand tickets. And, you know, but uh, Steve Mayer, who uh, runs the event side for the NHL, who's on site now, um, he says, boy, his, this has totally changed everybody's view of this market and what we're doing here. And, He's also said, and I'll let him say it uh, directly, but this may be one of the best venues we've ever played in because the football stadium, you know, this, there, we, I've been over there every day. And there's not a bad seat in this place. And even their sidelines, you know, they're, they're, they have a wall and the seats start up 10 feet higher than uh, than uh, a lot of places. Uh, but their sidelines are so narrow. You know, they have, you know, you go to, some of these college and NFL stadiums where they have 50 yards on each sideline, you know, they have about 20 yards on each sideline. So it's very tight building. Um, it's going to be a uh, great uh, excitement around the area. We have lots going on all week with it building up to it. So no, we're just looking forward to it and hopefully the weather will cooperate. That's always been, that was always one of the nice things about Carter Finley. Cause I've been there a handful of times. Like, it's a big, it's a big football stadium. You get that sense of scope, but it's also there's some minimacy to it. It's not as big as, you know, whatever some of the Big Ten stadiums or or, or what have you. Is there, it, it, how much of that uh, is is a selling point for the for the crowd? Like, or are you like, is that part of the process where you're like, all right, we're gonna do a tailgating thing. We're gonna come in. It's gonna be like NC State versus, you know, UNC or or, or whatever. Is is that part of the push? Like, is that part of what's helped you move that many tickets? Well, tailgating is big here for right. every sport, whether it's hockey, basketball, or football. Uh, so, you know, we have the great setup for that. Uh, so that that's an extra bonus, you know. And, and then just putting on a fan fest that day uh, where people can donate even tickets to the event, can come to the fan fest. Uh, you know, so we're, we're, we have a big one going on on Friday downtown. It shut down downtown for us. So I just think overall, uh, it's it's all one big package. You know, not one thing is driving, you know, the, you know, the seating capacity, I think, is great for 
people that are actually going to be able to see the game, see the puck, the whole thing. But, uh, you know, there's been multiple things that have been drivers for why the attendance will be what it is. But I think the most important thing is, which helps is, you know, we got a pretty good team. We're playing a good yeah. opponent that we have a great rivalry with and the game matters. And I think mm-hmm. all those things, when you put all those things together, I think it's going to be, uh, like I said before, a great event. You know, I, I, I mean, you mentioned the interest in this game. I think it does help that you're sitting on top of the Metro. And Sean and I were talking beforehand, and you made the comment when Mac, Max Petrietti went down that, that that was as kind of down as you'd seen that room, and the team has really responded. What, what have you seen in, in that stretch of games since that injury? Your group. Yeah, well, first I don't look at the standing, so are we still in first place right now? Oh, you don't look, yeah, you are, you are. You have, you have 76 <laughs> points as, as we speak right now, Don. It's 6-1-0 six, it's six since Pacioretty got hurt, for for the record. I, I did I did uh, check on that. Um, you know, it, uh, it, what I feel bad about is, you know, this guy we traded for him came in here, uh, obviously got injured towards Achilles, and then we watched him every day come into the room and, and work out with our guys and prepare and you know, uh, that's that's the hardest thing and watch him play five games and end up with the same injury. You know, uh, mm-hmm. yes, the team, we lost a player that we were counting on for the second half of the year. But more importantly, as a human being, that, that's the part that you really feel bad about because, you, you know, the, the effort and time that went into him trying to get back uh, and then to see that happen. So, you know, the, the locker room, we won that game. In that night, obviously, and, and after the game when I was down there, it, it was as somber you, it, as it, I've ever seen it. And I was worried about mm-hmm. it. And so around yeah. I talked about it because, you know, how's that bounce back going right. to be from there? And, you know, we, we got right back at it and, uh, you know, we were able to win a few more games after that. And now we'll continue to uh, strive toward uh, the most important date for you guys, March 3rd, and then gear up for the playoffs. Just us, not you. Yes. Yeah. Nah, just us. <laughs> well, I mean, the flip side is now you. I mean, you've got cap space now to work with. Is that? I mean, you could you could in theory replace the whole salary. Is that is that how you're, you're going to approach this? Because I mean, you still need everything he brings to the table. That why you brought him in in the first place, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, like I said, you know, our, we got a good team. Obviously, we've played all year and able to accomplish what we've done so far. But uh, you know, we are out in the marketplace looking to see what's available. Um, you know, it's, we don't have a great history of spending a lot of assets on rental players. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to make sure we are smart about it. You know, we got a good team. We want to add to our team, but we also don't want to, uh, you know, ruin our future for the next few years. So it's a balancing act, but, uh, and the good thing about it, we have Tom Dunnan who, you know, we have, we have a salary cap, but, uh, you know, our salaries will be the 90 million range after we get through with this. If we add players because of, we still have to pay patch already. Still have to pay them. That's yeah. Right. So, you know, people forget that. Uh, but you know, Tom's committed to winning and, you know, he's, he's, there's a deal that makes sense for us. We're certainly not held back from that, uh, restraint. Does the space that you guys occupy right now, and like we said, you're six and one since Pat Gerardi's injury, your the team looks, you know, night in, night out strong does that change the approach as far as you know we we know what you guys look for we know you're you're not typically in the market for rentals like kind of have an idea of what a carolina hurricanes player you know historically has looked like over the last few years but does the circumstances of this season and the way things are going and the way you've kind of behaved over the last six months or nine months does that change the calculus like are you more willing to look at rental players now than you have been in the past or or is it still term you know valued over yeah. over other things well as, you know never is a long time uh you know so uh, i don't want to say never you know i think if you're looking uh, strictly at rentals it's probably closer to the deadline you know we're going to uh, exhaust all our efforts at what players that potentially we could pick up there might be guys that people aren't thinking about at this time you know when you're willing to give up some good assets uh, to get a player that's got some term left so you know, we all know the, all the usual names that are out there, but, you know, we may try to look at uh, some other players, you know, and the Tice teams that with draft picks and, and prospects that like to move too. But, you know, I, as as we sit here today, we like our team. We don't want to distract from our team, but we would like to add to our team, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So I, I want to talk generally kind of strategy because, um, you know, we saw with the Bo, Bo Horvat trade, he gets he gets an extension after that. Um, 
in you know, I, I'm curious. I'm always curious, and and you've been on both sides of the equation here, where teams will or won't let the, that kind of player and their agent talk to you know Lou or yourself or whatever it is. What's the thought process that goes into that? Whether or not you allow your guy to talk, or because I know you always want to know what, what's going on, right? On the other right. side, side of that deal, I think I think it. You know, every every team organization has different thoughts, but my my thought is, you know, you don't want to make it a carte blanche because then you know the agent's going to control where the player goes. Right. You know, if you if you open the door and say, okay, these five teams, you know, I've said before, and I've been in that situation where I've traded players that, you know, once we agree to a deal, then I'll give you that opportunity to talk to that agent, uh, but not before because I think. You know, again, we want to control the process. The team we're dealing with wants to control the process. We don't want an agent to have have that much say in it, especially if a lot of these players don't have uh, any limitations where they can be moved. Right. So you want to make sure that uh, you get your ducks in order first. Uh, again, I've seen it both ways, and it's worked both ways. Um you know, some teams, you know, the cost certainty is critical moving forward because of cap, mm-hmm. which we're all concerned about. But uh, not necessarily something that uh, um, I, I don't think there's a yes or no answer for it. I think every every situation is you know, especially on a rental player, it's probably get more value maybe if you if you give somebody the opportunity to talk to them. Um, obviously, I think Vancouver's trade worked out well for both teams, uh, yeah. and so that can happen. But uh, yeah, I, I I could look at it both from both sides. Were you in on that? How how close on Bo Horvat? No, we we had some conversations, but uh, you know, I I knew it, Patrick. I've talked to Patrick. Patrick and I worked together for a few years in Pittsburgh, and mm-hmm. oh, that's right. He was he 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 was trying to get you know the highest first round pick that he possibly could get, and you know he was right up front about that from the start. And obviously, our our pick's going to be hopefully someplace in the late twenties or so, early thirties. Um, and you know, he he set out with that as a, a mission and a goal and he accomplished it. So I give him credit for that. So is it fair to say you, you have your first round pick this year and last year, obviously 2022, that wasn't the case because of the Kotkin uh deal. Um, is that first round pick something that you're open for business on? Like, are, are, you, are you willing, are you willing to part with that potentially for the right guy? Uh, I, I think so. You know, we, we have different philosophies in this organization sometimes, but uh, I think right now that the, uh, is particular for looking at players that uh, uh, that do have term. You know, I, again, the, the rental thing. I don't want to say never because you, you never know what's going. You know, we still got to play. I think it's. Uh, I looked the other day. I think we have nine games between now and trade deadline. Yeah. You know, if something happens bad, you know, you might have to adjust your thinking and you, you know uh, go a different course. But yeah, to answer your question, yeah, I think our first round pick would be playing this year. And when did you um? Uh- so I mean, you used to be pretty willing to ch- trade for rentals, <laughs> as we know. When did the when did the? I mean, it I must be you know Carolina. You guys, there's a lot of conversations that go into it. And Tom has a philosophy. You've got yeah. a, kind of a collaborative staff. When did that? Now it's like Carolina would never. It's 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 become this bit right. Like we know Carolina's mo, and I'm like, huh, because I I remember Don doing a few of those deals in the past. Yeah, I made the one big one uh, in Atlanta when I traded for uh, Kachuk. I remember yeah. that one. St. Louis. Is, how about that? Zitnik? Was that? A, I mean, we're yeah. going back. A few that wasn't a high. It was a pick, but not a first round pick. Yeah, yeah. It was a. It was. Uh, um, actually, I think that was Bur- that was Coburn. What is, but I mean, I think philos- philosophically, I, I think people are realizing. You, you look at what like Julian Breezebois is doing in Tampa. Like, there's, there's, there's a lot more. It, it just seemed like it was like, okay, there's all these UFAs, and we're going to move a first, and it, it, it just seemed like I don't want to say autopilot, but it was. A different time and then there's been this evolution where it's like okay we got to manage the cap here um it just seems like there has been an evolution there on that front well and you just mentioned you know like we, we look at our cap five years out and yeah you know, mm-hmm. this next summer we're in pretty good shape we're in really good shape and then you know after that we have you know sebastian Aho, brady shea mm. Pesci. we have we have four or five guys uh marty Nekesh, you know so we got to keep a you know our eye on um you know what the future looks like and we all know we're going to need some young players you're going to need uh some young players coming to the roster and um so you know picks are important but saying that you know if you can make your team better uh short term and maybe potentially long term you got to look at those situations too you mentioned neck is there he's been phenomenal this year we saw him 
went on a tear. I don't think coincidentally before the All Star break after after that mess. Um, what has clicked for him this year? Because we've seen flashes from that from him in the past, certainly. But man, just the the end to end production really from the jump with him has been uh, has has been fun to watch. Yeah, you know, we had lots of conversations last summer. Uh, his representation, you know, and 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 what I give a lot of credit to Marty is he realized last year didn't go the way he wanted to go. And he took some responsibility for that. We, we also have to take some responsibility because he's still a young player and developing them. But he took, and he, I know when he came to training camp this year, uh, you know, condition wise, never an issue, but he had a mindset that was much different than he's had in the past. And we saw it right from the tr- first day of training camp, you know, until con- continue as we speak here that, you know, he, he's committed to be the best player he can be every night, every ship. You know, he's not going to play great every night. Not every player is going to, but he's, he's put a work ethic in um, on a regular basis, which is, is got noticed by uh, the coaches and myself. And I think that's a big, big difference. Uh, the commitment that he's made uh, to try to be the best player he can. So uh, I give him all the credit in the world. Um, you know, he's, he's done everything we've asked him to do and he's performed. So, you know, we'll hopefully keep riding him the rest of the year. Well, Don, I know uh, I know it's a busy time, so we appreciate you hopping on here. Good to see you as always. Um, enjoy the outdoor game; it's such a fun event. Um, you know, it's it's fun. What I love about it, you get, you get to see the players and their families come out, and they get to skate, and and it's it becomes, you know, even a team bonding event, which is cool too. Which you know, I, yeah, we, we we got the crazy week this week. So we have uh, we go to Washington today. We have the father's trip. Uh, oh, Washington. father's trip. How's this batch of dads? Yeah. Good? <laughs> and anticipating any issues with this one? No, no, they're, they're always issues, but you know, the, but we have the same issues with the mothers too. So, don't want to be biased, but you know, we got that. Then we come home and Thursday, uh, we thought it'd be a good week to do it because we thought all the families would come in town for the outdoor game. And then Thursday night, we're doing our first Hall of Fame night where Camp Mort's uh, being inducted into our Hall of Fame. Mm. Uh, so it's going to be a great week here and uh, looking forward to next Monday, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, okay. Well, our, so it, it does, we're, we track the chatter just like anybody else. I mean, and is this, is this a, is this poorly timed for you guys? It, it is a busy <laughs> week on that, on that end of things. Like, are you like, I'd rather, I'd rather be, at, you know, at my desk working the phones rather than dealing with all this other, all, no, all the more extracurricular yeah. stuff. No, you know, we talk about, it all the time and you know you you, you gotta manage your time you know uh actually uh and then we throw in uh because we run the building here i oversee the building we have mm-hmm. blowfish on friday night <laughs> it's a big show <laughs> which was uh, show. They have been touring so we sold that out right away so it mm-hmm. but it all it, you know what it all goes and you just gotta make time you know you make time for uh the people you need to reach out to and talk to from a hockey standpoint and uh, no, I wouldn't have it any other way. You'd rather be busy than keep the option. That's for sure. <laughs> Is there a GM you th- you would estimate you've talked to more in in your career than any other GM? And on, on, just on the trade front, like who's who's your oh, on the trade front? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I always love to know who these. Who the, yeah, you know, there's a couple guys that I obviously I talked to uh, David Coyle, Kenny Holland quite yeah. a bit just because yeah. we go back so long, but. Uh, um, you know, the guy that we used to all talk to the most, I think all of us would say this is probably Doug Wilson. Yeah. Just talk to Doug, cause Doug, Doug was very active and, uh, very aggressive as far as staying in touch with everybody. And we all miss talking to Doug. So, no, uh, you know, we, we the, 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 the GM has changed. You know, there, there, mm-hmm. there are a lot, a lot of younger guys. I don't want to say newer guys, but younger guys. And, you know, it's, it's the dynamic and the league's getting big, you know, you don't yeah. have, mm-hmm. you know, as much time to talk to 32 guys. So, um, it's, uh, uh, it's different, but you know, after the, after we get through the trade deadline, we have our GM meetings down in Florida. That's the time that we all can have an opportunity to have a glass of wine together or whatever you so choose and, uh, get to know each other better. We saw, we saw, we saw Doug work. We saw Doug work in San Jose for so long. If you, uh, have you fostered a relationship with Mike Greer with the with his with with the, with the new guy? Have, have you uh, have you been on the phone with him at all? Mike, the GM there. Um, <laughs> obviously, I made the Burns trade with Mike. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. I, I know. Mm-hmm. I know. I've known Mike for a long time. Actually, uh, class guy. Uh, he's going to do a great job there. And um, yeah, I'm getting to know him a little better these days. So this <laughs> comes from Jeff Demet. He said, uh, "Could you mention the GM meetings?" 
Any uh, any appetite of changing the playoff format or the overtime format? Overtime might be for you guys. Might be an interesting one. Yeah. Well, we're. I think, I think we leave the league at overtime games this year. I think we're yeah. eleven mm-hmm. and nine or eleven and eight or something like that. Um. So I. I don't know. I mean, there's lots to talk about these things. Uh, they're all. You know, when you talk about playoffs, it's a CBA thing, and you know, obviously, the union's going to go through a, a major change here. Right, uh, here soon. Yes. Um. You know, I'm sure lots of things will be discussed at times, but, um, you know, we're just happy that uh, we're going to be able to hopefully clinch a playoff spot and try to advance in the post. Oh, you're just worried about your own team. You gave me the, you're, you're <laughs> only worried about your own team, Dan. <laughs> Come on. Uh Well, it's a classic. It's a classic, classic for a reason. We're just worried about, we're just worried about playing uh, Washington on whatever. Yeah. Yeah, our games, I, I, you know, and the truth be told, I mean, it, we, you always look to tweak things, but our game's in a great spot right now. And, you know, there's obviously all of us have things, ideas that, you know, you'd like to see down the road. But, you know, right now, I mean, attendance is great everywhere. Yeah. I mean, things are going and we got to make sure that we don't uh, uh, mess that up too much. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the the phrase you hear the most at the GM meetings is always unintended consequences, right? Like mm-hmm. we put you put in a rule or whatever, and you never know what the, you know, there might be something you're not anticipating. So, no, I hear that. Well, Don, good to see you. Thanks oh, for doing always, this. Yeah, always a pleasure, guys. Enjoyed it. Enjoy Hootie and the absolutely. Blowfish. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. We'll see All you. All right, guys. Thank you.